I've mentioned the word component several times already, but what exactly is a component in React? Let's dive into this fundamental concept. A component is a piece of the user interface that has its own logic and appearance. It can be as small as a button or as large as an entire page. Let me show you what I mean. If you look at a standard website, you can say there are five components, a header component at the top, a side nav component on the side, a main component in the middle, a footer component at the bottom, and one component that contains all of these. We call that containing component the root component, and it's usually named app component in React. Although each of the four nested components describe only part of the UI, they come together to make up the entire application. Components are also reusable. You can use the same component over and over again with the same or different data. For example, imagine a card component that displays Pokemon. That same card can show a grass type Pokemon, then a fire type, then a water type. Same component, but different data. Now, how do we actually write a component in React? It's actually super simple. A component is just a JavaScript function that returns some HTML describing what should appear on the screen. If we go back to our React project and open up app.jsx, you're actually looking at a component right now. This app component is responsible for creating what we see in the browser. It does seem like a lot is going on here, so let's simplify it to its most basic form. I will replace the existing HTML in the return statement with a simple div tag that contains a heading, Code Evolution React Course. We will see red squiggly lines for the unused code, so let's go ahead and remove it. Delete, 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 and delete again. The CSS import is optional, but I will keep it for now. If we save this and take a look at the browser, we will see the heading Code Evolution React Course displayed. So, a component is just a JavaScript function that returns some HTML describing what should appear on the screen. Now, let's create our own React component. Right here in amp.jsx, above the app function, I will define a new component. Function, welcome, parentheses, curly braces. And the convention in React is to use Haskell case for component names. Haskell case is a convention where each word in a compound name begins with a capital letter and all words are joined together without spaces or underscores. So here is user profile in Pascal case, in camel case, and snake case. Pascal case is what we will use for component names. Inside the function, we return the HTML heading element h2, so return h2, with the text, welcome, Vishwas. And just like that, we have defined our first React component. But if you look at the browser, you can see that component is not part of the UI yet. To display the component, we need to include it inside the app component, which is the root component displayed or rendered in the browser. So right here in the app function, I will include the welcome component inside it. The same function name, but with opening and self-closing tags. This is how we include a component in another component and invoke it. When we do this, the app component becomes the parent component and welcome becomes the child component. This parent-child terminology is very common when working with React components and is something you should be aware of. Back in VS Code, if we save the file and take a look at the browser, you will see Welcome Vishwas displayed below the H1 Code Evolution React course. Congratulations, because you have just created and used your first React component. Now, an important thing to note here is that component names start with an uppercase letter. This is how React distinguishes between custom components and built-in HTML elements. If you use a lowercase name, React will think you're trying to render an HTML element that doesn't exist. So if you write welcome with a lowercase w, the component will not be rendered. If you inspect 
and open the DevTools console, you can see the error. The tag welcome is unrecognized in this browser. If you meant to render a React component, start its name with an uppercase letter. Uppercase W, refresh, and the error disappears. We see welcome Vishwas. Back in VS Code, let's create a second component to make sure we get a good understanding of how components work. After all, developing with React is all about creating components and using them in other components. This time, let's define a button component. Function, button, parentheses, curly braces, and we will return the HTML button element with the text click me. We will include it in the app component right after welcome, button with an uppercase B. Save the file, and in the browser, you will see a button with the text click me. We will worry about handling the button click later, but you can see how we are composing our UI by combining different components together. The app component uses the welcome component and the button component. And if you wanted, the welcome component could use other components and so on. It is components all the way down. You can think about it like building a house. You don't build the entire house as one giant piece. Instead, you have walls, doors, windows, and a roof. Each piece has its own job and you put them together to create the complete house. That's exactly how we build UIs with React components. All right, let me summarize what we've learned about components. Components describe a part of the user interface. Components are JavaScript functions that return HTML. Components can be nested inside other components. Now you might be thinking, having all these components in one file is going to get messy real quick. And you're absolutely right. As our application grows, we will want to organize our components into separate files. In the next lesson, I will show you how to export components from their own files and import where you need them.